How to gain rapport with argumentative unconscious processes. What do you do when an unconscious process reacts negatively to your suggestions? For example, I commence writing this section by making Ku's statement to myself, every day in every way life gets better and better. The response to my mind was a loud voice making a negative statement. So then talking out loud to myself, I continued. The purpose of an auto-suggestion is not to deny the current state or condition, but to help install a mechanism to assist in the achievement of the desired outcome. One needs to help the unconscious mind understand that the purpose of the auto-suggestion is to harness the power of the unconscious mind, not to fight with it. The purpose of the auto-suggestion is an effort to help the conscious and unconscious minds work together in harmony. I then repeated the auto-suggestion to myself. The response from my mind was the same negative phrase as before, but a little quieter. I continued talking to myself. So when I say every day in every way my life gets better and better, it is not to deny my life experience, but to help create an attitude, a condition, a situation in which life can improve for the better. Invariably, one is unable to recognize small improvements made each day. The size of the improvement being not as significant as actually having been involved in the process of making an improvement. On repeating the statement once again, I find that the reactive voice is now barely audible. In addition, I hear a positive statement in my mind. But that does not mean from now on auto-suggestions will always slide directly into the unconscious mind. On the contrary, you may still need to convince the unconscious mind, that is yourself, that a certain openness to suggestions is necessary. You may have had a problem for many years. You may have tried lots of things and nothing has seemed to work. Okay, but that is no reason for an unconscious process that's a part personality, subpersonality, to block new attempts at achieving the desired outcome. The best approach with an objecting part should be to gain rapport with it and to enlist its help. At some level you will find that the objecting part wants for you to attain your desired outcome as much as you do consciously. You could also modify the suggestion, every day in every way my life gets better and better to something like, every day in small way, some small way, my life gets a little better. One needs to keep in mind that the conscious mind will often expect too much of the body and the self, and that in fact it is the conscious mind that needs to learn to accept the body for what it is, rather than how you would desire it to be. For example, if you suffer from adrenal exhaustion and then try and implant suggestions to play a game of tennis, then the unconscious, knowing that this is an unrealistic expectation, may fight the efforts of the conscious mind in its own effort to preserve the health of the body. The practice of auto-suggestion. Auto-suggestions can be made while in trance, while half asleep, and in the normal waking state. When making suggestions to oneself, make the statements in the positive. Rather than saying, don't feel scared, say feel confident. In addition, if you can create the physiology in your body first, then the effect will follow. For example, say to yourself, show me the posture of confidence. Show me the physiology of confidence. Show me the muscle tension of confidence. Show me the muscle relaxation of confidence. Show me the breath of confidence and show me the face of confidence. Another technique is to just laugh. At first this may be quite challenging, but if you can persevere and just laugh for five minutes as loudly and as uproariously as you possibly can, you will find that your state changes and relaxation, confidence and happiness seems to follow quite naturally. Ku's method was to formulate a general suggestion such as, every day in every respect I am getting better and better. Another variation is, every day in every way I am getting better and better. 
He felt this was more effective than specific suggestions. However, the author finds both specific and general suggestions to be necessary. After making the general suggestion, one can modify it, for example, as follows. Every day, in every way, I become more and more confident speaking to groups of people. Then one would see oneself in the mind's eye with the attributes of confidence, for example, standing tall, breathing freely and speaking with confidence. This would be aided by the suggestion, see yourself standing tall, see yourself breathing easily as you talk with growing confidence to a group of people. Here are the qualities in your voice that indicate confidence in your ability to engage an audience with ease. The reasoning behind giving a general suggestion is that it allows the unconscious mind to interpret it according to what it thinks is relevant at the time. In one case, for example, the author induced a trance in a client and gave suggestions for the removal of food cravings and at then at the end of the session induced another trance in which he gave general suggestions for change. On following up with the client a few weeks later, it was discovered that not only had she lost the desired weight, but she had also stopped smoking. In the context of auto-suggestion where the subject repeats the statement, every day in all respects I get better and better, Ku recommended that the subject should let the mind linger on the words in all respects. This is similar to all being well or, or God willing. This should be enough time for the unconscious mind to relate this to whatever is important to the unconscious mind at that point in time and to act upon it. Not surprisingly, Ku had noticed that his formula was most successful with those people who had previous hypnosis experience. Hence the reader should understand that to achieve optimum results with auto-suggestion, there are other things they should pay attention to as follows. Each day practice 20 to 30 minutes of a type of meditation which gives one practice in watching the breath and the thoughts. During meditation, replace the internal dialogue with a positive coaching internal dialogue that supports the meditation. Learn how to induce trance. Practice defining a desired outcome according to the NLP well-formed outcome conditions. Practice replacing the negative scenarios that play out in the mind with positive ones. Repeat Ku's mantra and variations at various times throughout the day in which an everyday trance state or a period of daydreaming might naturally occur, such as when walking to the shops waiting for a bus, having a rest break, and so on. Utilize the hypnagogic state that occurs just before the onset of sleep and on awakening in the morning to make auto-suggestion. Rapidly repeat Ku's mantra and variations of it 10 to 20 times. Who recommends a different approach for a general suggestion and a specific suggestion? He suggests a general sh formula should be articulated slowly and the words should be savoured. This gives space for the unconscious mind to consider the suggestion and make a decision as to what it wants to work on. It also allows for spontaneous imagery to occur which will have greater effect than imagery produced consciously. In the case of specific suggestion, he recommends that the formula should be uttered with the utmost speed. Note that in the E, some mantras are sung, the syllables of each word being stretched and blending into the next, while other mantras are repeated so rapidly that no space exists between the words. This has the effect of jamming the internal dialogue and of blocking any objections that may ordinarily have come to mind. If at any time throughout the day you should experience a negative state, there are a number of things which you can do. Be fascinated with what is happening, as this will take you to a, a meta state. A meta state is one in which you can observe and evaluate the lower state so as to form new understandings. 
sees a negative state as an opportunity to practice your meditation technique. Notice how the law of reversed effort exerts itself and that the harder you try to avoid a problem, the worse it gets. Learn to relax the mind and body and focus on what you want. Learn to manipulate the submodalities and the visual auditory and kinesthetic channels and thereby gain some control over the mind. Watch the breath and suggest to yourself that as long as I watch my breathing, then nothing will bother me. In the case of toothache, you might say, as long as I watch my breathing, then I won't feel a thing. Or, as long as I watch my breathing, then the tooth will become numb. In the case of anxiety and panic, one might suggest, as long as I watch my breathing, then my internal dialogue will become very quiet, and I will walk and breathe with great confidence, and I will feel fantastic. In the case of fatigue, Ah, it's nothing. It's going away. If one is overly worried about their health, which is an auto-suggestion itself, then would, one could try the suggestion, there is nothing wrong with me. In a few days I'll be as good as gold. Some people might dispute this approach as being in denial. But what needs to be considered is that the health problem itself may be in part be a result of auto-suggestion. In addition, the intention of focusing on a desired outcome is to help engage all aspects of the mind, body and soul, which then become a post-hypnotic suggestion in itself. Post-hypnotic suggestions. A post-hypnotic suggestion is a suggestion that is designed to occur in response to a specific stimulus at some time in the future sometimes even years ahead. If a behaviour, feeling or symptom should occur consistently, then it may be the result of a post-hypnotic suggestion. For example, John is asked to talk to a group of people. If he suggests to himself that he will feel nervous and won't know what to say, then when he stands before the group, then true to his order suggestion, he becomes speechless which further fuels his negative emotional state. Thereafter, when asked to talk before a group, two things operate. One is a reinforcement of the order suggestion. The other is a stimulus response conditioning, or more simply termed in NLP, as an anchored response. The stimulus may be internal, as in a thought, or external, as in the sight, sound, touch, smell, or taste of something. So the next time John is asked to speak before a group, if he reruns in his mind the previous negative experience, then this may serve to fire off the negative feelings associated with it, thereby creating a state of anxiety. The negative feelings themselves become a spontaneous suggestion to feel nervous. That is, nervousness suggests nervousness, and unless John does some change work with himself, the negative feelings will most likely become a post-hypnotic suggestion to feel nervous in a future situation. And true to form, when he arrives in a context which fits his description of public speaking, his memory of the last experience is triggered, an anchored response, and he freezes up. Post-hypnotic suggestions can also work in a favourable manner. John could have suggested to himself that talking before a group was an opportunity to have a lot of fun and that being in a fun and playful mood serves to facilitate perfect memory recall. Then after having one positive experience of public speaking, this memory would have served to intensify feelings of confidence. One needs to stay alert as post-hypnotic suggestions can occur all too easily. For example, a friend is ill, so you feel upset. Then you think of going out that evening to the shopping mall. In your mind, you imagine that you might bump into a good friend. You see yourself holding back tears. This then becomes a post-hypnotic suggestion. The structure of the suggestion is that you accessed a negative feeling by thinking of the first friend 
and then while holding that feeling you thought of meeting another friend. As a result the negative feeling becomes associated with the second friend. In regards to the thought of meeting a friend at the shopping mall, was that a random thought? Or did the unconscious mind have an intention by presenting you with that image? Regarding the ill friend, you think of her dying. This brings tears to your eyes. You think of the next time that you see her that you will have to hold back the tears. Once again, this is a post-hypnotic suggestion. As you should now realize, negative thinking will beget negative experiences, and negative experiences will fuel more negative thinking, ad infinitum, until some positive changes are made. When all is well and good, the mind is silent. You could also rephrase that as, when all is well with God, then the mind is silent. You may work hard to counteract the negative and be positive, but your positive suggestions won't go as deep as the spontaneous suggestion that arises from within. That is, unless you bring awareness to your thought processes. Any and all thoughts that arise from within, if they are not positive, then you need to make them so. One should begin by nurturing a countenance of confidence, love and happiness regardless of what occurs to you or the world. If a friend is ill, it does not help to cringe your body into a posture of pain that sympathizes with the other. All this does is to suggest to yourself to be ill. In addition, when the other sees you looking upset, it only serves to su suggest to them that they are perhaps more seriously unwell than they had thought. And like being trapped in a hall of mirrors, the feedback reflects upon itself exacerbating the situation. Rather, on seeing a friend who is ill, it would be more prudent to maintain a countenance of confidence, love and happiness which would suggest to them that soon they will be well. If you entertain positive thoughts, then these thoughts will bring positive experiences. It does not matter how small the positive experience is. As long as you keep your language and imagery focused on the positive, then positive thinking will lead to positive experiences, which will lead to more positive thinking ad infinitum. The processes of negativity and positivity are much the same. But you are required to make a decision as to whether you want the negative or the positive. To reiterate, a post-hypnotic suggestion is a suggestion that is given with the intent that it should be carried out at the level of the unconscious mind with no conscious effort. For example, that the unconscious mind should facilitate a healing or that it should carry out a suggestion on cue at a specified time. One should practice giving simple post-hypnotic suggestions to gain confidence in the process. The reader might be surprised to know that the trance state does not need to be deep for post-hypnotic suggestions to be effective. The normal waking state will suffice. Try the following experiment. Suggest to yourself that tomorrow, at a certain time, you must perform a specific behaviour. Or that tomorrow, on a specified cue, such as when you arrive somewhere, or see something or someone, you will have a desire to act at a behaviour or experience a resource state. For example, the next time I visit the local health food shop, I will, feel, I will feel compelled to whistle the tune of Jingle Bells. Then just forget about the suggestion and go about your activities. You could even give yourself the suggestion that you will consciously forget the suggestion and will have no memory of it until you become aware of the specified cue. The procedure is as follows and can be done in or out of trance. Identify a context in which you want the post-hypnotic suggestion to occur. Say, for example, a health food shop. 
identify the resource state or what you want the behavior to be. For example, a feeling of confidence generated by whistling jingle bells. Identify three cues that would remind you of the shop. The first being an image of the shop itself. Then in your mind's eye, back away from the shop and see what you would normally see before the health food shop. For example, a bakery. Then back away from the shopping centre to some landmark before the shopping centre. For example, a park. Associate your post-hypnotic suggestion to those cues. Unconscious mind, the next time I visit the health food shop, I want you to remind me to whistle jingle bells. When I see the bakery, remind me to whistle jingle bells. When I see the park, remind me to whistle jingle bells. Now I want to consciously forget all about that. Unconscious mind, can you remember to carry out this post-hypnotic suggestion? Use idiomotor responses to check the response to each suggestion. The next time you make your way to the health food shop, you should find yourself whistling jingle bells. You can also use auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory and gustatory cues. For example, the sound of someone's voice, a touch, a feeling, a smell or a taste. You could give yourself a post-hypnotic suggestion that when you feel anxious or nervous, that you will breathe deeply and hold your body in a confident posture. So anxiety becomes a post-hypnotic suggestion to breathe deeply and act with confidence. The smell of your working environment could be used as a cue to feel energized. The sight or taste of chocolate could be used as a cue to exercise.